Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge R530 server memory upgrade kits and how to properly load and configure the system. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by to learn a little bit more about uh, the Dell PowerEdge R530 today. Do us a favor, if you find anything useful in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. Well, hey, let's get started. Uh, first things first, there are uh, two CPUs inside. It's a LGA 2011-3 socket. It, uh, you can put an Intel Xeon E5 2600 V3 or V4 series processors. Uh, it takes DDR4 memory. There are 12 DIMM slots inside. Um, as far as the uh, the different um, uh, speeds you can use, you can use uh, 2133, uh, 2400, or all the way up to 2666. I will note there's really no benefit from the 2666, though it will clock back down to the 2400. So if you're just uh, you know stocking uh, 2666 just to have in your uh, data center, yes, you can use it, but it will clock down. So I just want to note that for you. Uh, if you're just buying it right now, I would recommend the 2400 because you'll get no extra. Um, benefit from the uh, 2666. Um, as far as the different sizes, you can use uh, 4 gig, 8 gig, uh, 16 gig, or all the way up to 32 gig. No, unfortunately, 64 gig modules do not work in this system. We did try. Uh, unfortunately, 32 gig is the highest you can go. And on that note, there are two types of memory you can use. You can use ECC registered, which is also known as an RDIM, or you can uh, use load reduce, which is known as an LRDIM. Um, really, there's not a huge difference. Sometimes with one, you'll get a little bit of higher scalability, but with this machine, uh, the max is actually the same for both, which is 384 gigabytes uh, via using uh, 12, 32 gigs at uh, 2400 megahertz. So uh, that being said, let's go ahead and open it up. I want to show you a little bit more about the inside, especially uh, how you get to the 12 DIMM slots, because CPU 1 actually has eight slots and CPU 2 has four. Uh, but before we get in and show you more, I'd like to um, grab my ESD gear. It's always better to uh, be inside a machine with the ESD gear just so you don't accidentally um, uh, shock it. So I'm going to grab it and be right back. All right, we're back with our ESD gear, so we're safe to open the machine. First things first, make sure the latch is set to unlock. Pop it open, lift up the top, just like uh, any Dell machine really you've ever been in. Pretty simple. Okay, uh, now that we are in, you will notice a couple of things. You have uh, uh, your back plane for uh, the different types of chassis. Some you can get uh, small form factor or large form factor if you uh, depend on what you want. You have all your fans. Uh, you have your air baffle, which is currently covering up the two CPUs and the heat sink. This is really the only obstacle in our way. Uh, and then you're going to have your hot swap power supplies and your RAIDs under here as well. Um, I believe it's H730 in here right now. I'll check in a second. So now you're going to pop the, um, the air baffle right up and put it to the side. So you will notice, as we discussed, there are two CPUs. CPU 1 controls the eight DIMM slots right here. CPU 2 controls the four DIMM slots right here, which is a little different. A lot of times you'll see uh, normally an even distribution where uh, CPU 1 will control, like say, uh, six DIMM slots, and CPU 2 would also control six DIMM slots. So that's one of the unique features, and that's one of the things I like to point out because um, you know if you only had one CPU in here, you could still actually uh, run eight DIMMs. Not that I would recommend that because uh, really you can get a better option in a one U uh, form factor um, as opposed to having to go with a, uh, a two U for if you just want one uh, CPU. So anyhow, um, let's get rolling. I want to show you uh, the memory channels to start with. So in uh, CPU 1, there are four memory channels, and uh, each channel has two DIMM slots. Um, and the nice thing is that uh, Dell has everything labeled. So um, if you weren't fully maxing it out, this is really important to note uh, because the way that you're going to want to install it is in the start of each memory channel, which is the white DIMM slot. So you'll notice uh, the first white over here, this is A1. The second white is A2. Now come on over here. The uh, first white on the outside is A3, and then the white on the inside is A4. And then if you come back over, this is going to be A5, A6, A7, A8. So that's the proper way to load it. Now if you're putting, you know, if you're just completely maxing it out, it really doesn't matter. You're just loading them all up. But if you are uh, only uh, putting in, let's just say, four DIMM slots or even two DIMM slots, you're going to want to use the whites, okay? Um, so um, if you're using two, I would recommend uh, using A1 and A2, okay? So uh, we'll go ahead and install it uh, now that we know a little bit more about the channels. Um, and actually, one of the things that's kind of cool over here on um, CPU2 is each one of the DIMMs is their own channel. So this goes uh, B1, B2, 
come the outside B3, B4. So uh, in essence, there are still are four channels per CPU. One of them just happens to be uh, one DIMM slot per, and this one happens to be two DIMM slots per. So okay, we're gonna go ahead and load it up. One of the things that I like to note before I get too far going, uh, personally, I like to open up all of my tabs, okay? Just makes it easier so you're not trying to do that while you're installing the module and accidentally drop it or you know make a, a you know just a, a user error. So I like to have everything popped open. And then I also like to note there's this key right here in the middle, this the notch that you're seeing. And that notch is really important. It's kind of um, really one of the only obstacles that's gonna be in your way to install the DIMMs is you just need to make sure you line it up properly. And I know that sounds really simple, but it's a it's a common user error uh, where someone's just, you know, uh, they're in the groove and they're installing everything and they go to put the DIMMs in and they're just not fully paying attention. And and they uh, have it inserted the wrong way because it's not perfectly in the center. So if I were to try and install it like this right now, it could actually uh, damage uh, the lead. So I have to make sure that I have it like this, okay? Um, and again, it's it's a simple thing, but I always like to kind of stress it a little bit. Because and this right here, this is actually another common uh, error that we see where uh, a user thinks that they have a failed module, and really it's not a failed module, it's just that the, uh, the module is not properly seated. So you can see right now the module is, it's, it's physically sitting there, I'm not holding it, uh, but the, the tabs are still sticking out, so it's not all the way inserted. So if you were to fire up the machine, it wouldn't actually register the module. So um, with this machine, it's a little bit different, because normally what I tell people is when you put them down, you're going to hear uh, two clicks where the tabs come in. Uh, the 14th generation as a whole is a lot quieter, um, but you need to just make sure both tabs are in so you push it down on both sides of the module and then you just need to make sure that these tabs are fully inserted so you can see that the other these two tabs on or the three other tabs are all uh, sticking out versus this one is fully in okay so it, it sounds you know kind of silly to be honest um, and and people you know will ask me why I stress that and it's because uh, we hear this pretty much every day where someone has run into an issue um, and it is just not uh, it's just a you know a seating issue that they just need to go back and rotate their modules around and make sure that they have them uh, properly seated so um, so I'm gonna just keep on installing these uh, so we'll hit the fast forward and um, and we'll be right back and voila just like that we're done um, this one, you know, it's a little bit tougher because the tabs um, on this aren't quite as uh, easy as uh, some of the past generation. So it took a little bit longer, but nothing that's uh, too troubling or too hard. Uh, you guys can definitely do it at home. One of the things I would definitely recommend, though, is at the end to just make sure all of your tabs are fully in. I'm going to stress this again just because, especially for this machine, it seems like it would be very easy uh, for that to happen at home um, if you're using this. Uh, as a you know just a, a home lab server a, you know a gaming server even if you're running your uh, whole uh, corporate environment on it um, I can see anyone making that kind of a mistake so anyhow that being said uh, we're gonna go ahead and put it back together so we're gonna put the air baffle back on which is very simple just gonna line it up and put it back on and let's just make sure we can regulate the airflow drop the top and we are done Hey, if you're uh, looking for any upgrades for your Dell uh, PowerEdge R530, do us a favor and uh, email us at sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com. We'd love to help, and we have a number of different options uh, perfect for this machine. And hey, if you made it this far, do us a favor, click that like, smash that subscribe. Hey, take care, guys.